So the distributive property we've got to review now. Um, and let's think about it like this. If you had 3 times 10 plus 2, 10 plus 2 is obviously 12, and we should know 3 12s is 36. Okay, That's one way of doing it, but we could also do a thing called the distributive property, which is we take this number here, and we multiply it in to these two numbers here. And we get 3 times 10 plus 3 times 2, Okay, and that gives us 30 plus 6, which of course is 36, okay? So we can, there's two ways of calculating this. You can add the 10 and 2 to get 12, and then 3 12 is 36, or you can apply the distributive property. That's two ways. Similarly, if you had this situation, a bag with an apple and a banana in it, and a number 3 was written there, what we can do is think about the parentheses, it's a bag. Parentheses is a bag, okay? If there's a number written here, Logically, you might think, hold on a second, that just looks like, you know, a bag. Here's a bag, uh, you know, tied with string, and I have an apple in it and a banana, okay? Now, if you wrote the number three on the outside, that's like saying I have three bags. Well, sure, if I had three of those bags, I would have three apples and three bananas. See, the common mistake is people write 3A plus B. Now, if I have three of these bags, I certainly have three apples and three bananas, don't I? Not just 3A and B. That makes sense, right? So I need to distribute this number um, I need, and multiply it by everything inside here to get 3 times A plus 3 times B. Okay, we also remember that if we just have 3a written there, it means 3 multiplied by a. It's the same thing. 3 multiplied by a is 3a. You could say, I have 3 times an apple. That's saying I have 3 apples. Or 3 times a banana is like saying I have 3 bananas. So we just, if we write a letter beside, if we write it on beside a letter, it means multiply. That's what it means. Okay, now what if you have a negative number in the outside? Well, it's like saying, this is a bag. There's an apple and a banana in the bag. Take away three of these bags. What happens? So figure out that transaction. If I take away three of these bags, obviously I'm taking away three apples and I'm taking away three bananas because you're taking away three of those bags. That makes sense, right? Taking away three of these bags. So in other words, we take whatever the number is here and multiply it by everything inside. So negative three times a is negative three a. And negative 3 times b is minus 3b. So I can I can put this plus sign down here, and then negative 3 times b gives a negative 3b. But, you know, this we're all supposed to write the answer with less ink. So as little ink as possible. Now, this is plus negative. That's the same thing as subtract anyway. I mean, 5, for example, 5 plus negative uh, 2 is the same thing as 5 minus 2, isn't it? Positive 5 and negative 2 is simply 3, and 5 minus 2 is also 3. So just to remind ourselves, you know, plus negative is the same thing as subtract. So instead of putting plus negative here, I can just write subtract, and that's just negative 3a, you know, minus 3b, and you're done. Okay? So what if you also had negative inside the parentheses? Well, it's kind of like... Um, in this bag, I have a banana minus four dollars, or subtract is kind of like plus a, a bill of four dollars. Okay, so a, a, like I bought a drink and it cost me four dollars. Okay, now if I take away two of these bags, okay, that I'll distribute the negative two, so I'll be taking away two bananas. So obviously that'll give me minus two b. But I'm also going to take away two of these bills of four dollars. Now, if you take away two bills, oh, you're up, you're up money. That's a good thing because you're taking away a bill. If I take away a bill or a debt, that's a good thing. So it's actually like giving you eight dollars. Or you can just think negative times negative is positive, so it's positive eight, right? Similarly, if you know you do this one, I have a bag. It has an apple and a bill of five dollars in it. If you if if this is what was inside of a bag, and you take away three of these bags, what would the answer be? Write it down.
Well, you simply multiply the negative 3 in here, you get minus 3 apples, and then take away 3 of these bills of $5 is like giving 15. You're up 15, or you go negative times negative gives positive, right? So what if I had a bag, and it simply had an apple and a parking ticket of $25, A minus 25, just like that. How do I simplify this bag? Well, it's just one bag there, isn't it? Just one. I mean, you could multiply one in here if you want and get 1A minus 25, which, of course, is the same thing as A minus 25. But if you just have parentheses on its own, I mean, they just go away because it's only one bag there, so to speak, right? But what about this situation? Um, take away parentheses and then A minus 25 in here. Take away this bag. If a bag has a an apple and a parking ticket of $25 and you take it away, what's the result of that? Well, my question to you is how many bags are there? Do I have 10 bags? Do I have two bags or three? I just have one bag. So you can put a one here. Put a one there. And now all I have to do is multiply in by negative one to get minus one A. And then negative 1 times negative 25 is plus 25, and you're done, right? So think about this one. Here's a bag. Inside the bag is two apples, three bananas, and a cherry. Subtract that bag. What happens? If you take that bag away or subtract it, what's the overall result? Write down the answer. And again, you think, well, how many bags do I have? Do I have 10 bags? 100 bags? I just have one, don't I? Just one bag. So I'm subtracting one bag. Or in other words, multiplying negative 1 into every term inside. So I should get negative 1 times 2 minus 2a, take away 2 apples. Negative 1 times 3b, take away 3 bananas. Negative 1 times c, take away 1c. So if I take away this bag, I'm taking away 2 apples. Take away 3 bananas, I'm taking away 1 cherry, right? Okay. You know, you could also think about, you know, stock market, if the, if um, Shell shares went, um, if you decided to reduce your Shell shares by 8, increase your Texas Go shares by 2, and then reduce your Microsoft shares by 3 on the stock market, that's what it would look like, okay? Now, if you decide, oh, I've changed my mind, I don't want to do that, you could put parentheses around the entire transaction and cancel it. Okay, if I cancel this transaction, what would that look like? I would cancel everything. You distribute the negative in everywhere, or it's like taking away one bag. So again, you would you know multiply negative one in everywhere. Negative one times negative eight is positive eight s. So I go back up on the shell shares. Negative 1 times 2, I reduce the text go by 2, and then negative 1 times negative 3, I increase Microsoft by 3, right? So do this one now. If if you went down 2 on shell shares, if you went down 4 on text go shares, and then back up, and, and you increase your Microsoft shares by 5, that's what this is. But what happens when you cancel the entire transaction, you undo all of your work again and get back to where you started. Write down the answer. In this case, again, we need to distribute the negative sign in everywhere here, right? Or, in other words, multiply in by a negative 1 everywhere. Negative times negative plus 2s, negative times negative plus 4t, negative times positive minus 5m, right? So you multiply negative 1 into everything, right? Okay, I'm sure you could do this one by yourself. Here's a bag, and it has two apples and three bananas in it. How many of these bags do I have? I have four of them. This bag over here has an apple and a banana in it, and I have, I'm going to add five of these. So take four of these bags and add five of these. What's the answer? Press pause in the video and do that. Okay, now I'll do it. So simply need to take this 4 and multiply it in here to get 8 apples plus 12 bananas, right? 
Then I simply take this 5 and multiply that in to get 5 banana apples, whoops, plus 5 bananas. Now I just need to add like terms. Apples add to apples, which gives me 13 apples and bananas. As then I've got 12 bananas and 5 bananas. That is 17 bananas. So this is my answer. 13A plus 17B, and of course these are not like terms, so I'm done. Similarly, these were not like terms, and these were not like terms, so these, this is why these were the final answer, right? So what about something like this? 5 minus 4 times 2A plus 3. I have $5, then I take away 4 of these bags. What's the re result? Well, the most common error here is to go 5 minus 4 is 1, and that's 1 times 2a plus 3. This is incorrect. Why is that wrong? That's completely wrong to go 5 minus 4 gives 1. Why can't it go 5 minus 4 gives 1? Well, the answer is because you've got to think about the order of operations PEMDAS, okay? Order of operations PEMDAS says we do parentheses, then exponents, then multiply then divide, then we add, and then we subtract, okay? So the first thing we, we look at our, our operations here, we have a parentheses 2a plus 3, but 2a plus 3 won't add, because that's two apples and three dollars, let's say. They're not like terms, so you can't add these guys. So we cannot do parentheses. We don't have any exponents, any squares or cubes. Do we have a multiplication? We do, don't we? We have 4 being multiplied by this. And we have a subtraction, 5 minus 4, but we can't do that. See, that's at the end of PEMDAS. Okay, so we cannot start with subtraction. We have to start with multiplication up here, right? Now, again, subtraction is the same as plus negative. So you can think of this as 5 plus negative 4 times this. And begin by multiplying in negative 4 to get negative 8a um, minus 12, and then this 5 just stays here, okay? So I have 5 minus 8a minus 12, and I can still add like terms, of course, because 5 and negative 12 go together. That's like $5 minus $12 uh, minus $7, right? And then minus 8a. So minus $7, minus 8A, eight, eight, I'm done. These are not like terms, so that's the answer. You're finished, right? So press pause in the video and do this one. Okay, now I'll do it. Now, once again, I cannot go 3 minus 2 gives 1, and then 1 times A minus 5. This is completely wrong because I need to follow PEMDAS, and I must begin not with subtraction, but with multiplication. And I have... A multiplication here and this subtraction can be written as plus negative now it says 3 plus negative 2 times everything in here negative 2 times a is minus 2a negative 2 times negative 5 is plus 10 right and the 3 of course goes down here and I can add like terms still and that gives me negative 2a and then 3 and 10 makes uh, 13 so negative 2a plus 13 okay and that's the answer there. Okay. Um, so obviously we should be able to do this one. Two times three a plus four b minus a plus b. Think about apples and bananas. We have two of these bags, and then minus this bag. Now, I see two bags here, so I can multiply the 2 in, and I get 6a plus 8b. But what do I do with this? Well, there's one bag there, isn't it? Just one, so I can put the number 1 there and multiply in with a negative 1. And that gives me negative 1 times a is minus 1a, negative 1 times b is minus 1b. Okay? And now I can go about and add like terms. 6 apples minus 1 apple, 5 apples, 8 bananas minus 1 banana, plus 7 bananas. And again, 5 apples and 7 bananas cannot be added because they're not the same quantity, so we're done, right? Um, so 
I think we should be fine on this. Uh, well, I guess I'll just give you this example. Okay, let's say Microsoft shares, you're going down two, and then you're going up on four Texaco shares. So decrease your Microsoft shares by two, increase your Texaco shares by four, and do this three times. Then increase Microsoft by three and decrease Texaco by one, but cancel this. What is the overall transaction? One way you're looking at so you know press pause and see if you can do this one. So if I did this, these these things three times each, okay, it would be you'd need to multiply three in here, or you can think of I've got this these quantities in a in a bag in a container and multiplying I've got three of these bags, so multiplying three in gives me negative six m, you know, uh, plus twelve t. Now this is also in a bag. And how many bags are here? Well, there's just one, one bag. So I can put a one here, and it's like subtract one of these, so I multiply in with a negative one to give me negative 3m, and then negative one times negative t plus t, right? Don't forget that. Then adding like terms, negative 6m minus 3m, six negatives and three negatives make nine negatives. If I go down six on the Microsoft, and down 3 in the Microsoft means I go down 9 altogether. And then up 12 in Texaco and up 1 on Texaco means I go up 13 on Texaco. So this is the combined result of those shares transactions, let's say. Okay. Okay. X squared plus X. Press pause on the video and write down what you think that is. What's X squared plus X? Is it x? Is it sorry? Is it two x or is it two x squared? Hmm. Uh, the answer is it's not either of them. And let me show you why. If x was equal to the number ten, what would x squared be equal to? Write down the answer. If x was ten, then x squared would be. 10 squared, wouldn't it? Which would, which is, of course, 100, right? So if x is 10, x squared is 100, what we would have here is 100 plus 10. Now, 100 plus 10, what's that equal to? Well, it's definitely equal to 110, right? Now, if x was 10, 2x would be 2 times 10, which is 20. That's not 110. 2x squared would be 2 times, see if x squared was 100, right? If x squared was 100, but 2x squared then would be 200, which would be, well, it's 200. Okay, so 110 is not the same thing as 200 either, is it? So x squared plus x is certainly not 2x, and it's certainly not 2x squared, is it? The answer is x squared plus x. x squared plus x is equal to x squared plus x because these are not like terms. It's just like um, if you had x plus y, that would be equal to x plus y because x and y are not like terms. Simple as that, right? So how about this one? 2x squared plus 7x plus 3x squared minus 5x. Write down the answer. And again, if we think about it, I mean, if x squared was 100, and if x was 10, and x squared was 100, then we would have 200s plus 7 tens plus 300s minus 5 tens. What, how would you add these guys together? Well, you would go, good point, I said, you go 300s plus uh, 200s plus 300s gives us 500s, and we would go 7 tens minus 5 tens is 2 tens, and that would be the answer, 520, basically. And so x squared terms are like, so 2x squareds and 3x squareds gives us 5x squareds, uh, 7x's minus 5x's gives us uh, two x's. So just like 
we add five hundreds and two tens, the answer is five x squared plus two x's, and we're done because these are not like terms and we can't go any further. Just like, I mean, I can't say that seven hundreds, can I? This is five hundred and twenty, not seven hundred. I can't say it's seven tens either. It's not seventy. This is five hundred and two tens, and that's the answer there, five hundred and twenty. Five x squared plus two x, right? Okay, everything we're working with, of course, is, are, these are all called poly, polynomials. Polynomials is the um, uh, Greek word for, or is it Latin, for many numbers, because we're adding different numbers together. So it's just called, everything we've done so far is a polynomial. Everything we've seen so far is a polynomial, because it has different uh, numbers in it, all right? Um, 3x squared, x cubed, minus 2x squared, plus x, plus x cubed, plus 5x squared, plus x. Okay? This guy, what do you think? Um, and I'll just show you, I mean, if x was 10, x squared would be 100, and x cubed would be 10 cubed, 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000, right? So this guy would look like this, 3,000s minus 200s plus x plus a 10 plus 1,000 plus 500s plus a 10. And if I added these guys together, I'd put the thousands together. 3,000 and, and 1,000 gives us 4,000s um, minus 200s uh, plus 500s gives us 300s, and 10 plus 10 gives us um, two tens, basically. So the answer would be obviously 4,300 and, oops, 4,320, or 4,300s and two tens. That would be the answer, right? So similarly with this guy, I can put my x cubes together. 3x cubed plus 1x cubed is 4x cubed. I can put my squares together, minus 2x squared plus 5x squared is 3x squared, and then I can put the x's together, 1x, and 1x makes 2x, and these are not like terms, so we are done. So we know that x, x squared and x cubed are not like terms. Okay? And um, this, uh, this is very important. X, x squared and x cubed are not like terms. Similarly, if you add y, y squared and y cubed, these are also not like terms, right? Or z, z squared and z, z cubed, whatever the letter happened to be, okay? So um, finally, we come to where we needed to be, which is if I'm adding these guys together, what's the answer? Press pause and see if you can do it. And again, um, this is just, uh, let's see, we've got a bag here. How many bags? Are there 10 bags, 20 bags? There's just one bag, right? So I can multiply one in here if I like, and I just get 3x squared plus 4x. And here we've got another parenthesis or another bag. And how many bags are here? Uh, it's just like one bag, so if I subtract one bag, it's like multiplying a negative 1 in everywhere, right? Negative 1 times 3x minus 3x. Negative 1 times negative 2, negative times negative, plus 2. Then we need to add like terms if possible. Are there any like terms here? We've got 4x minus 3x, don't we? And that gives 1x. And then there, that, these are the only like terms. So I have 3x squared plus 1x plus 2, and this is the final answer, okay? Um, and again, let's see. So 3x squared plus 1x plus 2. And there are 1, 2, 3 terms in this final answer. And so this thing is called a trinomial because it has three terms in it. 1, 2, three okay whereas if you if, if you had say simply you know 2a plus uh, b okay there are two terms here and this thing would be called a binomial 
because it has two terms. And then if you had something like, um, if you just, if your answer was something like 3x all by itself, that would be called a monomial because there is just one term. Like a monocycle has just one wheel. Monomial is just one term. So press pause in the video and try this example. Okay, now I'll do it. Um, Again, there's just one bag here, so I can multiply one in everywhere, or simply write down y squared minus 2y plus 3. Uh, there's just one bag here, and this is subtract one bag. So multiply negative 1 in everywhere, and I get minus 4y squared, and then negative times negative plus 2y, and then negative times negative, negative 1 times negative 1 plus 1, and at this point I can add like terms. y squared minus 4y squared. These are like terms, right? Put these guys together. 1y squared minus 4y squared, that's a negative 3y squared. Uh, negative 2y plus 2y. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so that's plus 0y. And then 3 plus 1, $3 and $1 is $4. Okay, so the 0y, of course, is equal to 0. So my answer should be written with as little ink as possible, and it should be negative 3y squared plus 4. And there are one, two terms in this guy, so this guy is called a binomial. Okay, so once again, everything we're working with, all of these things we've seen are called polynomials. And polynomial means many numbers, and there are different types like this one has, this answer here has three numbers in it, so it's called a trinomial. This answer has two numbers, that's a binomial. This answer has two numbers in it, that's a binomial, uh, or two terms in it, rather. And this answer, for if your answer was, say, 3x, for example, that would be a monomial, because it has one number in it, okay? So, um, press pause in your video and see if you can get the right answer here. So, I should get just, you know, this is one bag here, so multiply by 1, 3x squared minus 1x minus 2. Now, when I distribute negative here, I think about multiplying negative 1 in everywhere, and I get negative 1x squared, and then negative 1 times negative x gives positive 1x. Negative 1 times positive 2 gives negative 2, and then I add like terms. 3x squared minus 1x squared, 2x squared. Okay, negative 1x plus 1x plus 0x. And then negative 2 minus 2, in debt by $2, subtract $2, in debt by $4. Now 0x, of course, is equal to 0, so my final answer should be this, 2x squared minus 4, which is a binomial, because there are two terms in it.